and he would like to speak to us about the protection of residents against discrimination. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mayor Tomlinson. Uh, should, should I lean up into the mic or should yeah, I? Yeah, I think that's, that's good there. You might want to just speak up a bit, but I think you're pretty good now. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Um, I'll just, is it okay if I read off like a script as well? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm going to start your time. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, uh, th thank you, Honorable Mayor, uh, Mr. Madam Mayor Tomlinson, members of the council, um, Madam City Manager. My name is Harry Underwood, and I am Vice President of PFLAG Columbus. We are a support group for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people and their allies in all walks of life. We are a chapter of a national organization which was started in the, in the early 1970s by a heterosexual school teacher who saw that her son, that her son uh, saw on television that her son was being thrown down an escalator in New York City by NYPD officers uh, while protesting for gay rights um, very early, just right after the Stonewall riots that happened in 1968. Um, and and, and PFLAG, as an organization, we provide a support group, a welcoming, safe space for all people, for uh, whatever their sexual orientation or gender identity. And we want to help people better understand themselves and each other on those bases and understand that these issues uh, or, or these categories, these identities, such, that, such as sexual orientation or gender identity, have no impact upon the content of one's character or their ability to, to be a productive member of society. I am here today to ask the City Council to consider passing legislation uh, in which will protect persons of all orienta sexual orientations and gender identities from discrimination in housing, public accommodations, and both private and public employment. Alongside other protected classes such as sex, race, skin color, national origin, and religious affiliation. I ask this because our history as a country is strongly tinged with oppressive, often violent practices against citizens of this country of ours on the basis of a perceived flouting of an expected sexual orientation or gender identity. And this has gone on for much of our nation's history. As we have matured as a country, as we have extended civil rights, liberties, and solidarities to people who were not previously considered as deserving of such perks of citizenship, or even to be considered human beings, such as African American slaves, such as Native Americans, and other peoples, even after slavery was, uh, it was overthrown in, uh, in this country after the Civil War, including Jewish people, Irish people, and other considered underclasses of an ethnic identity. We have faced questions about how much we, as a society, are obligated to mandate a basic expectation in the civil space of mutual respect for human beings who are differently identified from the status quo or majority. PFLAG recognizes that people who are differently identified by the gender of who they love or with which gender they identify themselves need basic protections on the same level as race, as skin color, as national origin, as religious affiliation. Less people need to be kicked out of their public or private sector jobs on the basis of their perceived sexual orientation and gender identity or the fact that they simply say that they wish to marry the person who they love. Uh, a case that happened recently in Macon, uh, about 90 miles due east of Columbus, where a man who had served for a few years as the music teacher for Mount DeSales Academy, a Catholic uh, school for, um, where he was very well received as a school teacher. He was fired for, you know, when, he, when he disclosed in public that he, that he planned to get married to the person who, they, who he loved, who just happened to be of the male gender. And so now he is suing for his um, uh, uh, filing an EEOC lawsuit uh, to claim discrimination under, if I'm correct, Title IX. Uh, under, under the Title IX law at the federal level so that he will re be able to get his job back and so that he will be able to be re restored to employment for 
his students and the parents who support him as a teacher, as a music teacher for Mount Giselle's Academy in Macon, Georgia. Less people need to be kicked out of public housing for their sexual orientation and gender identity. More people need to be allowed to be honest to those to whom, with whom they live, work, buy, and play about their sexual orientation and gender identity without fear of reversible, oh, excuse me, if I'm guessing. That's your five-minute warning, so five you continue minutes. on. We'll put more uh, the five minutes on the clock. Okay, all right. I'll try to work through this. Um, it, more people need to be allowed to be honest to those with whom they live, work, buy, and play in civil space about their sexual orientation and gender identity within mutual respect, without fear of irreversible, unnecessary, and uncivil repercussions. I may be asked about why this protection by the city is needed in and of itself. It's because, going off of the platform raised by Dr. Martin Luther King at, his march, at the March on Washington speech, that these identities, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, have as much to do with the content of one's character as any other identity protected by existing city, state, and federal law, such as the color of one's skin, one's biological sex, or one's national origin. That is to say, no effect at all. I do not wish to ask this as a member of a lobbying organization or a political action committee, but as a leader of a support group for people who wish to begin to understand such differences in themselves and with each other. I ask this in the interest of seeing a more inclusive and affirming city that the people who come to PFLAG meetings wish to see in our lifetimes. Our city will do a lot of good when our citizens can be empowered by our government to be more free and more equal to each other in these aspects. And at the hands of unqualified animus, by those who hold any type of power in our community, can be stayed from acting on such sentiments. LGBT people in our community should not be unfairly stigmatized in private or public space from accessing the services which are accorded to other residents of this city. Shining us or anyone as customers or employees or tenants or users because of so-called disagreement with our honest identity does not, that does nothing of a material or ethical benefit to one's life or community and in fact wounds the fabric of our community. Why allow such discrimination to go unquestioned or unabated at the expense of our community's humanity? Over 200 municipalities across the United States, from California to New York, from Minnesota to Texas and Florida, and at least 21 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico, and employing sectors of, of our federal government have prohibited such discrimination in employment and other sectors, helping to make their jurisdictions more inclusive, affirming, and free for their residents. We can do the same in here in Columbus and have the same effect. What are we waiting for? People's lives, through no fault of their own, are at stake. Please protect sexual orientation and gender identity from discrimination in housing, public accommodations, and public and private employment, so that no matter who you are or who you love, Columbus, Georgia, the Fountain City, will be a more equitable and free and loving place to live for you, for us, for all. Thank you for your time. Well, Mr. Underwood, you did a very good job. I know you were nervous when you came up, but that was very nice. And thank you. Thank you for yes, being here. Yes. Uh, if you would, get your information to the city attorney. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so he can review it, and mm -hmm. uh, he'll do what's called a staff memo. A staff memo. Okay. All right. Thank hey, you so thank much. Thank you so much. All right. Um, Mr. City Manager? Hold on, I'm sorry. There, um, there you go. Uh -huh. if, if, you don't, uh, if you don't object, um, I'd like to actually postpone the two updates, uh, Civic Center and Transportation Projects, until the first Tuesday. <laughs> but I mean, if you like, well, I, got, I got motions and seconds, and we don't need one. I think you just are looking for some direction, and that's well, I don't yeah, hear any objection. Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. I, 
All right, we're we're moving on. We've got uh, council. Oh, excuse me. We've got Mr. Jeffrey Johnson, who would like to speak to us about. Whoa. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Uh, the civic center director just informed me he has four vendors here, so we will not postpone that one. All right. Okay. They've been very patient, so we're not going to do that to you. Thank you all very much. We see you in the back. We're moving. Actually, we'll move it. Maybe we can move it up to the front of your agenda. There you go. We just saved you 40 minutes. So, um, All right. So now we've got Mr. Uh, Johnston, who's with us. Uh, he wants to talk to us about smoking and taxi cabs, drug testing, and sales tax. Mr. Johnston, uh, good evening. Hi. How are you? Uh, Jeff Johnston, 519 